Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Box Office Talk. This is the show where I break down what happened in the box office, see if my predictions for the top five are correct, then make predictions for next week's top five. So let's get right on into it. Last week I predicted that number one would be Joker, number two would be Gemini Man, number three would be The Addams Family, number four would be Jexy, and number five would be Abominable. And unfortunately I only got one out of five of my predictions right. I thought maybe, I'd maybe not a, a perfect five out of five, but I thought it'd be a little more simpler this weekend. Unfortunately not, so let's go over what happened in the overall top ten. Number one was was once again Joker, the only prediction I got right, having a fairly solid drop of only about 42%, which is really great. It uh, made $55 million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of $192 million. Domestically, as far as Todd Phillips' career goes, it is only $62 million behind The Hangover Part 2 and $85 million behind Hangover Part 1. So I honestly do think the chances are great here of seeing Joker becoming domestically Todd Phillips' highest grossing film, considering how many people have went out to see it this week and also last weekend, how much the percentage dropped. So honestly, I think the chances are great. Worldwide, however, not only is it sitting at 543 million, which is past the half a billion margin, but it's also only 43 million behind The Hangover Part 2 to be Todd Phillips' highest grossing film worldwide. So domestically, we still have a ways to go to see if it does become his highest grossing film, but worldwide, it's practically going to happen next weekend. So that's honestly a really great thing to see for Todd Phillips to achieve this. Number two, we have The Addams Family. I thought maybe this movie would only make like around 20 million. I didn't know if the marketing push was really there. I didn't know if there was really an interest for it, but it did make 30 million dollars this weekend on a budget of only 40 million, so it's a relatively cheap animated film. And although there is no worldwide total released yet, eventually there could be one that'll push it over its doubling point of 80 million dollars. So this could be pretty good for the film if they wanted to spawn a franchise. The numbers certainly could be there to support that. It did have a slightly higher opening than both the live action Adams Family movies, too, so that's a good achievement on their part despite it not being like a huge opening or anything they are already kind of proving themselves to be quite successful even if it is minimally so. Number three we have Gemini Man which I thought would make more considering it's an action film and it's Will Smith and they have this crutch of Will Smith uh, having two roles but unfortunately that couldn't help it at all and only made 20 million dollars this weekend and worldwide it's not really helping that much either when you have numbers sitting at 59 million dollars the budget of this movie is reported to be 138 million dollars but honestly I wouldn't be surprised if it was maybe a little bit over that considering the amount of technology that went into this. So uh, this is honestly looking to be a really big flop for Ang Lee, which is very unfortunate because obviously a lot of people worked on this thing and maybe worldwide some numbers will bump up at some point and maybe it will double that budget. But like I said, I'm thinking that maybe the budget is a little bit larger than they're letting on considering how much people kind of talked about the technology of this thing. Number four, we have Abominable making six million, adding to a domestic total of 47 million. If you want to know where it is on the uh, DreamWorks low tier ranking, it's only 3 million behind the El Dorado movie, so it won't be the second to last uh, lowest grossing <laughs> DreamWorks movie for long. It will be like the third to last. Worldwide, it is sitting at $108 million, though, which is pretty good, and it places it $14 million behind the Spirit Stallion DreamWorks movie, but it's still obviously not a high grosser. It does only need about $42 million more to double its $75 million budget, though, so that's not too bad, but this is still shaping up to be... If it does get to its doubling point, then it's still a mild success, sort of. It is still shaping up to be one of DreamWorks' weaker films as far as their financial gain goes. Number five, we have Downton Abbey still sticking around, making four million, adding to a domestic total of eighty-two million dollars worldwide. It is sitting at one hundred and fifty-two million. So obviously, it is still doing fantastically in theaters. I bet El Camino is really kicking themselves right now for not trying to release their movie in wider places like Downton Abbey did. Because look what happened here. I honestly don't have much else to add other than that. So let's move on to number six, which is Hustlers, making three point eight million, adding to a domestic total of ninety-eight million dollars. If you want to know where that is on the STX chart, like I've been mentioning recently, it's still 10 million behind the upside and 15 million behind Bad Moms. Worldwide, it is sitting at 121 million, and that's only 1 million behind the upside and 9 million behind Bad Moms Christmas. It would, at that point, once it outgrosses those, get into the top five chart for the worldwide grosses of STX films, right behind Valerian, the first Bad Moms, and the Foreigner. So that's pretty good. I'm sure we'll be seeing that happening by next weekend. Number seven, once again, Judy. I like. I feel like it's 
been here for a long time now, but it's have some it's having some staying power in the number seven spot, which is kind of odd. But it made three point twenty five million this weekend, adding to a domestic total of fourteen million. I still don't know the budget of this thing. I still can't find it, and I can't find any worldwide numbers, so I really don't have much else to add from what I said other than last weekend. So let's move on to number eight, which is it chapter two, making three point twenty two million, adding to a domestic total of two hundred and seven million dollars and worldwide it is sitting at four hundred and forty five million. Now I just wanted to mention something real quick about this movie. Now last weekend I tried to make it seem like uh, this movie hadn't outgrossed the green mile yet, but that was only because I made a mistake and didn't realize I was looking at the adjusted for inflation thing, which I genuinely don't really look at when it comes to these videos, so my apologies. It already did outgross the green mile worldwide and domestically. I was just mistakenly looking at the adjusted for inflation thing. My bad. Let's move on to number nine, which is Jexy. I thought this movie would do a lot better since it. I, I've, I've seen the trailers for this thing quite a bit, and it seems like there are a lot of movies that were dipping below uh, as far as what they were gaining. So I thought Jexy could slip into the top five, unfortunately, and only made $3.1 million. So if you're a fan of this movie, I'm sorry. I don't know what the budget is, but I'm assuming it's like at least over 15 or 20 million or something like that. I'm honestly kind of surprised this movie didn't go to Netflix, considering Adam Devine kind of has a relationship with them now after Game Over Man and uh, the, uh, uh, that other one he did, like with the time traveling photo but something I forgot the title of it but, I got, but I'm kind of surprised this movie isn't one of those Netflix films it probably could have done better if it did go there though number 10 closing out the video we have Ad Astra making only 1 million dollars adding to a domestic total of 47 million worldwide it is sitting at 120 it's 80 million away from doubling it's a hundred million dollar budget unfortunately it's looking like it's about to leave the top 10 and it's not gonna have much of a rebound worldwide if it does then that that would be pretty cool for the fans of this film but unfortunately it's leaving with a lot of money being lost on this thing. Now it's time for the fun part, the predictions for next week's top five. Number one, I'm going with Maleficent, Mistress of Evil. Number two, Joker. Number three, Zombieland, Double Tap. Number four, The Addams Family. And number five, Gemini Man. But what are your predictions for next week's top five? Leave them in the comments below. And as always, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. I'm Jackson Fulcher. See you guys next time.